Okay. Everything going on. Oh, good morning, everybody. Welcome. My name is Stephanie Borger, and I am the chair of the Adult Christian Education Committee here at FPC. We are really grateful that you have tuned in this morning. Um, as we have been doing during Advent, we are going to try to make this conversation a bit interactive. So if you are on Facebook watching, we invite you to chime in in the comments. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and say hello, say good morning, let us know you're out there. We are going to be asking some questions. We invite you to share your thoughts in the comment section. And anytime you have uh, something you would like to add, feel free to, to just put that in the comments and we'll try to incorporate those into our conversation. Um, here uh, on the panel with me this morning, we have Delas. You wanna say hello? Can we hear Delas okay? I'm on now. I was not on it before. <laughs> All right, wonderful. And Delas, of course, is our director of uh, Youth and Young Adult Ministries, and we are grateful that she is on the panel this morning. And Pastor Allison will be joining us momentarily. She was preaching and leading worship this morning, so she'll be here uh, in, a mo in a minute. So we are glad that you are with us today. And before we dig into our study, we want to let you know about some other opportunities to engage in learning and digging into scripture and deepening our faith together. Uh, tonight and every Sunday night at 7 p.m. on Zoom, we have evening prayer. And this is a time of praying some psalms together, of looking at a brief scripture passage and just uh, reflecting on how the Spirit is speaking to it through us together, of praying for our community and our world and one another and sharing our own prayer requests and just having a little bit of fellowship and spending some time together on Sunday nights. And that lasts um, uh, till about 7.30 or 7.45 or so. And you are invited to join us on Zoom. You can either log in on the computer or you can call in on the telephone. And that information is in your bulletin announcements or on the church website. Or you can always contact the church office if you need help figuring out how to get connected. I believe today we also have youth fellowship, is that right? Yes, yep, today at um, 11.45 in the youth room. Fantastic. And on Wednesday nights, every Wednesday at seven, we have our Zoom Bible study. Tonight we are finishing up a series for Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany. And we'll be looking at some Epiphany texts. And then next Wednesday, we are going to be starting a brand new series. So if you're the kind of person who likes to sort of join things at the beginning, uh, next Wednesday, we're starting a new series and you are invited to tune in also on Zoom. The information is on the church website or you can contact the office. And again, you can do that either on the computer with video and audio, or you can call in on the phone if computers are not your thing. All right, we're still waiting for Allison here. Anything else going on in the life of the church uh, that the staff would like us to know about? <laughs> um, I don't believe so. Well, I do know that um, youth group will continue to meet even when um, in-person worship is suspended because we have less than 10 um, coming. And um, if there's ever a time when there is more than 10, we're gonna break that up. And so we'll have um, youth group meeting on the third Thursday of the month. Um, but then if there is a large number of kids wanting to attend, we're gonna have um, middle school age or junior high um, meet a separate night than the senior high. But also we've been having, um, during the Sunday school hour on Sunday uh, with Ron Herman and Mindy and Pete Knob We've been meeting with the high school and college students, and the conversation has been quite interesting. 
um, but really rewarding and just I, I feel like everyone um, is enjoying the conversation. So what, wonderful. looking forward to that Wonderful, today. all right, <laughs> thanks. We have some people alive and well out there in Facebook awesome. land. So I'm excited we'll have a few more folks in our conversation. Um, why don't we pray together as we get started? Oh God, we thank you so much for this Lord's Day, for this time that we have together, for the technology that allows us to connect in study and fellowship and prayer. We ask that you would bless this time, that you would use it for our edification, that we may come to see more fully who you are, that we may grow to love you more and love our neighbors more because of it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So Allison's still not here yet. So folks out in Facebook land, we're going to need you to chime in so that poor to last doesn't have to <laughs> be the only one on this panel with me. So today we are in the season of Christmas. Uh, it is the 10th day of Christmas. Christmas tide lasts for 12 days, according per the song. And coming up this Wednesday, we have EP. Epiphany. And today in our worship, we are uh, celebrating Epiphany today, a couple of days early. So after the 12 days of Christmas, which we've still got a couple of more of, we come to this event in the church calendar known as Epiphany. Now, that's a, it's a day in the church calendar, but it's also just a regular word in the English language. Mm -hmm. So folks out in Facebook land and folks on our panel here, when we hear the word epiphany, having an epiphany, what comes to mind? Go ahead and share your thoughts in the chat. What comes to mind when you hear the word epiphany? And Delas, I'm gonna start you with you. Start with me. I'm gonna start with you because <laughs> Allison's still getting her mic ready. Um, I can say that um, as a as a child and and growing up. When I thought of Epiphany, um, there was always, uh, I knew that it would always be a big dinner. Mm. Um, so we look forward to um, Epiphany Sunday and the feast um, that we would have with our family, and our church family, but then also again when we got home. Um, but then the conversation. Mm. Um, so just, I can remember the conversation growing up um, talking about you know the three wise men and just getting an understanding um, as a child um, of like the importance of that conversation that the three wise men had with King Herod and then proceeding forward as opposed to going back. Um, and so I liked how Pastor Allison touched on that in her sermon this morning. It really brought that back to mind. Um, but now as I think about Epiphany Sunday, it's, it's pretty much the same, those same thoughts although we will not have a feast. Yeah. There will be no feast. No feast this year. <laughs> I know. I know. So, so you, did you get together, like, with your, like, was that, like, a whole family gathering for that you? Was like, that was a whole family like, gathering. Or was it a church gathering? It was, it was a combination of both. Okay, okay. So we would have a, um, you know, there's worship in the morning, and then there would be, um, like, this huge feast at 3 p.m. at the yep. church. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, you know, with our church family. But yeah. then when we left there, um, we went home and our family gathered together yeah. at home. Yeah. As well as we had some um, yeah. like in-laws and like everyone would just come over to our house and mm -hmm. it would be a huge gathering and mm -hmm. lots of kids. Yeah, and lots of kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so cool. So it's been an important day in it the is, calendar yeah. for you for a long Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Yeah. We have some folks on Facebook who are saying that the word epiphany reminds them of an awakening. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We've wow. maybe sometimes heard people say like, oh, I had an epiphany. Yeah. Like there was something that I didn't quite understand. And then all of a sudden, like the light bulb light clicks bulb. on. <laughs> <laughs> you have that light bulb moment, that like aha moment. Yeah. That epiphany. Yeah. Yeah. What, what about you? What comes to mind I, when you I hear just, that word? I mean, I think, well, I love that, that you guys made it like a celebration. That's awesome that your family and your church did that. Um, you know, it's, I think here, we, we give out Bibles on Epiphany. We give out Bibles to our kids. And so we would have, you know, a little kind of, you know, a little luncheon or whatever to do that, which was really nice. But beyond that, we didn't really, we haven't really had anything 
else on Epiphany Sunday, but um, and we're celebrating Epiphany today, although it's I think Tuesday. It's Wednesday. 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 Yep. Wednesday. But we are we're celebrating we're it celebrating, today. Yeah, because yeah. next Sunday is Baptism of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean I think it's interesting that Epiphany is can be used in a secular way, but also you know in a very kind of spiritual you know way too when you think about you know epiphany or transformation that you've had um through through faith but also an epiphany as far as you know it's used in secular culture to just mean like uh, some kind of dramatic event that yeah. you know produces some kind of insight or or you know perspective or something like that mm. so i think it's an interesting word that actually means manifestation. Ooh, so, manifestation. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's used in a lot of different ways in a lot of different contexts, so. Yeah, but I love how you describe that, a dramatic event that mm -hmm. produces a new insight. Mm -hmm. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. that's what I said in my sermon, so. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I have not heard the sermon yet, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited. The last well, it's then. really good. But <laughs> we may be covering some of the same territory, yeah. but that's okay. That, and that's absolutely yeah. okay. So on this day, we of course are winding up the Christmas season. We have just yeah. celebrated the birth of Jesus. That's a huge event. This baby born in a manger, unto us a child is born, and it's great. And now in this time of epiphany, we begin to sort of dig into, well, what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. Who really mm -hmm. is that baby? What is this baby up to? Yeah. Why is right. this so important? Right. Right. And so the season of, the day of epiphany and the whole then sort of season that follows after it mm -hmm. is really dedicated to this idea of having those aha moments mm -hmm. about who this baby whose birth we just celebrated is. Right. And so we are going to be reading some scripture about that in worship today. We're going to be hearing a sermon about that today. And we are also going to be singing some epiphany hymns. We have, of course, for those who have been with us the past several weeks during Advent, know that in this hour we have been looking at some Advent hymns and digging into the ways that they can help us gain a new appreciation for the season. So we're going to continue that pattern for one more day here and look at what is probably the most famous Epiphany hymn. We sing it practically every year. Uh, it's probably very familiar to many of us. But I know I, at least, have sung this many, many times without really paying attention to the words, without really thinking about it much. So I want to invite us into a time of listening to this hymn, We Three Kings, really paying attention to the lyrics and how these lyrics point us to an epiphany about who Jesus is. So I'm going to put the lyrics in the chat. We are going to watch a video of this hymn, and I would invite you uh, to, to really meditate on these lyrics, pay attention to how, um, how they help us experience this revelation of who Jesus is. This is kind of set up as um, being sung sort of like a monologue from the perspective of the, the wise men, the magi, who bring gifts to Jesus. And the first verse and the last verse are kind of general. And then the middle three verses each talk about one of the gifts that the Gospel of Matthew tells us the wise men bring. And it offers a little meditation on how each of those three gifts might point us to a deeper understanding mm. of who the baby Jesus is. So I'd invite you to listen to this hymn, and then we're going to talk about it. We just sang this today, today, this morning in worship. Yeah. Traverse afar, 
following yonder star Oh, star of wonder, star of night Star with royal beauty bright Westward leading still proceeding Guide us to thy perfect light So there's a lot packed into these verses, and a lot that I went for a long time without ever really noticing. So I would like to take a few minutes and just kind of take this hymn verse by verse mm -hmm. and explore a little bit what each verse helps point us towards um, as we encounter this Epiphany Sunday, this time when we recognize who Jesus is. So the first verse just sort of sets the scene. And it takes a little poetic license. You know, scripture doesn't specifically tell us how many kings there were, mm -hmm. right? right? We know there were three gifts that are listed in the gospel, right. gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Mm -hmm. And so we've kind of often made assumptions that, oh, each king brought one gift. But we don't necessarily we don't know. know that. We also right. don't know if they were men and women, too. Yeah. I mean, there could have been um, both men and women who were traveling. 
Yeah. So there's a lot we never, don't know about who they are. <laughs> we like to fill in the blanks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it more fun, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we do know that they brought gifts. We do know yeah. that they traveled. Yep. We do know um, quite a bit about them from the from the gospel, as we mm-hmm. I imagine heard in your sermon. Yeah. And so then the second, third, and fourth verses each talk about one of these gifts mm-hmm. and give us a little poem about why perhaps that gift might have been brought. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've seen some jokes on Facebook this week about like, what kind of gifts are gold and frankincense and myrrh to bring to a baby, right? Why didn't they bring like diapers and- Oh yeah, that's what the, that's what the three midwives brought after the- <laughs> Right. <laughs> after the wise men, the three midwives came with diapers and formula and like whatever. Right, oh blankets God. or teddy bears, right? Yeah, exactly. So this does, it's kind of when we read this, you know, list of gifts in the gospel, it sounds really yeah. random, right. especially to our modern ears. Right. We're like, what kind of gifts are those? Yeah. Yeah. And so I think this hymn helps us meditate on mm-hmm. what those gifts might have to teach us. Mm-hmm. And so verse two of this hymn talks about gold. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, Gold I bring to crown him again, king forever, ceasing never, over us all to reign. Mm -hmm. So uh, folks at home on Facebook and on our panel here, I would like to hear your thoughts about what that gift of gold might um, lead us to come to understand about who the baby Jesus is. Well, gold was for kings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it seems right that that gift would be given to the true king. Mm. Right. Absolutely. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And to, <clears throat> to crown him again. Mm. Ooh, yeah. that's good. Yeah. yeah. I'm really intrigued how this verse sort of starts off recognizing he's born a king. Mm-hmm, Even mm-hmm. this little tiny baby mm-hmm. is somehow a king. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yet he'll be king forever, yeah. ceasing mm-hmm. never. Mm-hmm. Kind of pointing us to both yeah. the infancy and right. the eternal ruling right. yeah. Absolutely. of Jesus. And then over us all to reign, mm. you know, reign, he reigns over everyone and everything. Yeah. Yes, you know? Yeah. Not just not just the magi who brought the gifts. Yeah. Right, you know. Yeah. So then verse three talks about frankincense. Frankincense to offer as I to offer have I. Incense owns a deity nigh. Prayer and praising, voices raising, worshiping God most high. What does this hymn point us to about what the significance of frankincense might be? I like the cartoon where it's like the guy brings gold, the guy, the other guy brings myrrh, and then the guy shows up with Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we don't even know what frankincense is in our modern world, yeah, I know, right? Exactly. Like, it's so weird. But it's so, it's so funny. Uh, religious humor is so great, isn't it? I know you post some things too on your Facebook. It's hilarious. We, we, yeah. Jesus. So, so frankincense is not the same thing as Frankenstein. Okay, let's right. Not a horror character. Right yeah, get, get that, that out of the way. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what is um, frankincense? So I'm thinking it has something to do with incense. Okay, like an incense. Like a, mm-hmm. a, yep. you know, that it's something that's burned yeah. that emits some kind of pleasing odor, I would think. Yeah. And I don't, I don't really, I don't really like the, the scent. That yeah. frankincense goo, the incense, yeah. like, um, yeah. but it, yeah, it is an incense that you yeah. that you burn, and yeah. um, so oftentimes I, I do I burn um, incense and light sage, and uh-huh. you know walk through the house, and yep. and there's always a spirit of um, prayer and mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. just um, uh, a spirit of. Um, really just going to God and, and, and this, this place of um, humility and, and mm-hmm. asking, you know, for forgiveness for mm-hmm. 
all things, you know, even things that I may not have thought of. Um, and I think that really comes from this time when we were younger and there were, there were incense burning and candles burning and praise music is, is high and, and there was this sense of prayer and praise. So as I read this, you know, verse three, I'm like, I remember that and uh -huh. I still do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> so so you're, some of us might burn incense yes. in our own yes. prayer lives. Yes. Yes. Some mm -hmm. churches burn incense Absolutely. during the worship service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When in scripture do we read about incense? So, boy, that's a good question. I, I mean, hmm. <laughs> I know in our unit oh, on the Psalms, a number of the Psalms okay. that we read yeah. referenced, you know, prayers ascending to God like incense. Oh, like incense. Yeah. Does it actually say incense? A couple of them, it does. I don't have the, you know, citations on me right now. But, wow. And, of course, you know, in the temple in Jerusalem, right. incense would be burned. Right, right as a, you know, sign of prayers ascending mm -hmm. to God, mm -hmm. you know, in the context of offering those offerings and those mm -hmm. prayers and that worship. And ascending. And ascending, yeah. 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 When you burn incense, the, the smoke yeah, rises, rises up. Rises, yeah. yeah, the fragrance sort of permeates everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it, it, it's a custom that some churches, even today, still, yeah. you know, use frequently. But it, it is associated in biblical times and mm -hmm. in the present with prayer with our prayers yeah. rising up to God. And I like yeah. what you said, yeah. that like the, the scent sort of permeates everything. Mm -hmm. Like it yeah. touches mm -hmm. everything. And when we mm -hmm. think of the spirit of God, God touches everything. Mm -hmm. Like here where it mm -hmm. says, you know, cease and never over us all to reign, yeah. covering us all. Covering us all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on Facebook, Anne shares that she has been to Russian Orthodox worship oh, wow. services, oh, wow. yeah. and they use a lot of incense. Uh -huh. um, and uh -huh. you really, you kind of walk into the sanctuary and it's just yeah. thick with it. Yeah. yeah. Does it always smell the same or are there like different? Well, they have different scents. So there's there all, all different kinds of, of scents. I'm wondering like, that's when you burn in your home. I'm wondering like in a Russian Orthodox church like that, if there's right. just like one, one, one kind of scent or yeah, I, yeah I, 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 don't know, I don't know the details about that, um, but that would be an interesting thing to look into. Yeah, I mean, and is, yeah. it, is it always a pleasing scent? I mean, I, don't I, I think one hopes that it is. <laughs> I mean, if it permeates everything. I don't yeah. think it's always, yeah. Okay, I live with boys. I live with boys, so yeah. smells are something we talk about often. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, so I'm, I'm just talking freely here. Yeah. But I'm just wondering, you know, I'm just yeah. wondering. I, I, don't, I don't really remember going into a church where, like, I was just, like, bombarded with that smell of incense. I'm trying to think back to think if I have. Yeah, Orthodox and, churches Orthodox are, you know, churches? always use it. Okay. Catholic churches oftentimes do, sometimes in not such large quantities. Yeah. Some Anglican yeah. Episcopal churches. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because it could be really strong and, yeah. like, overbearing yeah. at yeah. times. Yeah, yeah depending on, yeah. I guess, the setting and exactly how many incense are Yeah, really. yeah. yeah. Hmm. But I, so I love what this verse in the hymn says, that, you know, incense owns a deity nigh. Oh, wow. It's kind of flowery language, but reminding us that God is yes. close. God is accessible. God is yes. near to mm -hmm. us. And that our prayer and our praising voices raise up mm -hmm. and worship God most high. So we've got in verse mm -hmm. one, gold that you would give to a king, mm -hmm. or in verse two. In verse three, incense that you would use in worship, worship. of God. Mm -hmm. Then we get to verse four about the final gift. And man, this one is kind of jarring. If you're ever mm -hmm. like out in a shopping mall in Christmas time mm -hmm. and you hear this over the loudspeaker, yeah. myrrh is mine, it's bitter perfume, breathes a life of gathering gloom, mm -hmm. yeah. sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the stone cold tomb. Yeah, wow. Well, that's not very uplifting no, now, is it? Not. But now myrrh, um, is it an oil? Is it an oil? Yeah. So, like, I would think that, I mean, to me, I just thought of, like, oh, that's, you know, the tomb. 
the stone cold tomb. Yeah. And I know that they used oils on, you know, to prepare bodies for burial. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we specifically read that story every year yeah. of after Christ's crucifixion, mm -hmm. when the women go to prepare yeah. his body. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So yeah, myrrh is, a, is an um, item that would be used yeah. in the preparation of dead bodies yeah. to get them ready for burial. So like some serious foreshadowing here, yeah. right? Yeah. Of what's to come. Yeah. I mean, that, that, to think about that though, like the presence that the Magi brought Jesus at his birth actually foreshadowed the type of death he would experience. Yeah. Mm. Sorrowing, sighing, mm -hmm. bleeding. This is some, some intense language yeah. here. Yeah. So why is this important on this Epiphany Sunday? If yeah. our goal today is to have more insight mm -hmm. into who Jesus is, why are these three things important? That he is a king, that he is the deity we worship, and that he is going to die. How do these three things help us understand who the baby Jesus is better? Why do they matter so much? Yeah. Folks on Facebook, we would love to hear your thoughts, <laughs> but also the two of you. Well, I know John Calvin had these, the three offices, right? The prophet, priest, and king. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I see the king yeah. in two and the priest in three, verse three, Ooh. because of so much talk about, you know, the temple, right? Uh -huh. Oh, that's interesting. And then the prophet, it's a little bit of a harder, you know, correlation, I think, with the myrrh. But at the same time, Jesus predicted his own death. Yeah. Jesus was a prophet. You know, like, mm, I, you yeah. know. I, yeah, you I definitely you can see prophecy here. Yeah. 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 So that's, I'm just wondering, 1857, the year that it was written trying to think when John Calvin wrote. I don't know when he wrote his institute. A few hundred years before. A few hundred but, years yeah. before. Yeah, so, maybe, so they had access to that kind of, that yeah. theology. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if maybe they took it from Oh, that, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And of course, there are lots of, you know, important things we can say about who Jesus is. Um, but yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, Anne says that it's only uplifting because we know he will give us life in his death. In his death. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, good. That's beautiful. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and of course, we get to that in verse 5. We do. Yeah. You know, this, this, this verse about death and the gift that foreshadows Christ's yes. death isn't the end of the story. Glorious now, behold him arise, king and God and sacrifice. Yeah. Alleluia, alleluia, sounds through the earth and skies. So that at the end of the day, the fact that baby Jesus is a king mm -hmm. and is a god yeah. and is going to be a sacrifice, those three things together are cause for praise. Yeah. It definitely does. Yeah. The weary world rejoices. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's past hours. And that, that just really, that was just so on time. Yeah. The weary, the weary world, world rejoices. rejoices. Yeah. Wow. This is so, um, it's just so poetic. It is, yeah. isn't it? It's, and you don't realize it when you're singing it. It's not yeah. until like you sit down and you like, like, that's why I've, words. Yes, I've been loving these, um, these songs that you bring us stuff because, you know, we <coughs> sing them and we oftentimes don't even think about them. Yeah. But then when you sit down and you're just like really looking at the lyrics, you're like, there's just gems everywhere. You know, there's yeah, just absolutely. treasures in all of these, all of these songs. Yeah. A lot of, and a lot of interesting theology and mm. when you really break it down and yeah. it's good stuff. Yeah, so, so we hope that reflecting on the hymns like this a little bit can yeah. not only help us understand more about Jesus, yeah. but can also enrich our worship. Yeah. So Absolutely. if you have not yet participated in worship and you tune in at 1045, you will have the chance to sing this hymn and hopefully this can enhance your, your worship through it. So what I want to do now is uh, turn to our scripture for today, mm -hmm. and we're going to look at our gospel from the lectionary, which we okay, read in worship, course. but we're going to read a slightly expanded uh, passage and read a little bit more than we did in worship today. 
So we're going to turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2. So if you're at home, grab your Bible and turn along with us. Matthew chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 1 through 18. Who would be willing to read for us? I'll read. Great, thanks. Am Matthew, Matthew chapter 2, 1 to 18. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi, from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem and the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem in its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Thanks, Delas. Mm -hmm. So this passage is a real whirlwind. There's some, some real joy and high points, mm -hmm. and there's also some real horror and tragedy. So where in this passage do we see people having epiphanies about Jesus? Folks on Facebook, feel free to share in the chat. And Allison and Delas, mm -hmm. where do we see people in this passage having epiphanies about Jesus? It looks like verse 2. Yeah. Yeah. And what happens in verse 2? They came from the east and asked, where's mm -hmm. the one who has been born king of the Jews? Yeah. We so, saw his thought. Yeah. So somehow, through their interpretation of the signs in the stars, they have this yeah. insight. Yeah. This insight that Jesus is born king of the Jews. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Are there other moments we see epiphanies here? I think the extra verses that you read for today, starting at 13, when Joseph has this epiphany, mm. right? Has this dream. Oh, yeah. That he's given this insight, right? Yeah. And um, that he should flee to Egypt uh -huh. um, mm. to keep Jesus safe. Yeah. Um, so, so Joseph has this, this insight about what what's going to happen yeah. what god's plan for their protection is yeah. yeah 
what about, do you think that, so the, the, the Magi have some sort of insight before they set off on their journey. Mm -hmm. Do you think they have sort of a second epiphany once they get there? Oh, that's a good question. Huh. I mean, when they, they have that dream, I mean, they had the dream mm -hmm. not to go back not the route they back. came. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah they, they, hear, they hear God speak to them directly. Mm -hmm. I'm also really struck by verses, by, by ver, you know, verse 11. So they, whatever, you know, insight they have, it's enough yeah. to prompt them to set out on this journey. Right. So they right. clearly already have mm -hmm. a pretty significant sense that something important is happening. Mm -hmm. But then on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, mm -hmm. and they knelt down and they worshiped. Mm -hmm. And then they open their treasure chests and they offer him these gifts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we don't know for sure how much of this they knew ahead of time, mm -hmm. how much of it was a new revelation right. once they actually were in the presence of Christ. Right. You know, we right. don't know, but, yeah. but it seems like there are some, a couple of significant moments here. Yeah. And it also seems like there's a lot left out. Yeah. I always read scripture and I'm like, oh, I wish I knew more. You know, yeah. I'm like, why, are, why aren't there more details? Like, because I feel like that verse 11 is so packed. Like, yeah. on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary's mother, and then they knelt down and paid him homage or worshipped him. Yeah. And I'm like, what happens between when you enter the house yep. and you fall on your knees? Yeah. Like, what happens in the meantime there? Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, that's such that's a great left to our imagination. That's yeah. what we input. I know that's what we. Yeah, exactly, exactly. What do we? What do we imagine that was that was like? And you know, the fact that you're saying, did they have a second epiphany? This might be their second epiphany. You know, like this might be. You know, they obviously had some insight going into this, but maybe they just thought, yeah, we're just going to go see. Like it's an interesting thing. We're just going to go see. Right. You know, like we believe this happened. Okay, but right. then it's like then they they believe they were tra they were transformed. You know, mm. like at that moment when they saw Jesus, they, there was a new understanding there. There was a deeper understanding of who this child right. was. To go from curious to worship, actually worshiping, you know, right. the Lord. There's, you know. Yeah. Oh, that, that's a, a great question. Yeah. And I think that's a really interesting question to reflect on in our own spiritual journeys, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. What has that process looked like for us right, mm -hmm. right. in between that time of like, oh, this is worth checking out yeah, right. and yeah. that actual moment of encounter and worship? Yeah, exactly. I also wonder, you said treasure, like they opened their treasure chest. Mm -hmm. Like my mind goes there, like did yeah. they actually carry a treasure chest mm -hmm. and once they got there and received this epiphany, these yeah. are the gifts to give him or did yeah. they go with these three gifts initially? Like, That's a great question. Yeah. 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 I'm so struck, too, by, you know, we don't know exactly who these people were, mm -hmm. but presumably they're people with quite a bit of wealth, mm -hmm. quite a bit of power, mm -hmm. quite a bit of worldly prestige and authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the fact that these powerful people mm -hmm. kneel down and worship a baby mm -hmm. and recognize that baby as the true king. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the things that in this story just really sparks my imagination. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So Anne asks something really fascinating on Facebook. She says, did Herod have an epiphany yeah. as to how important this birth really was? That's a great and how it might I think so, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's a yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Herod obviously reacts really badly, right? right. <laughs> his his yeah. response is the opposite exactly. of the Magi. Exactly. But he's threatened because he knows there's something significant happening, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So I'd say yes, he absolutely had an epiphany. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. To let me know when you find him yeah. so that I can go and worship him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, he, he's such a sneaky jerk. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and he was, like, scared at first when he sent the Magi. But then when he realized that they tricked him and went another way, oh my goodness. then he was really scared. I yes. feel like then he really got scared. And then he got kind of crazy yeah. because then he did this awful thing that, that you had us read, you know, and I didn't go that far, you know, yeah. today. And we usually don't go that far into the scripture 
um, and read about the slaughter of the innocents, but mm -hmm. it's it's there and right. it's it's horrible. Yeah. So I mean, what what darkness lies inside of Herod is yeah. you know that's that's a scary place to go. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I imagine it's like um, on the big screen and mm -hmm. like yeah. diving deeper into the to the word to really understand that darkness. Yeah. that you describe yeah. and yeah. how relevant it is because that darkness is all around us yeah today yeah absolutely yeah. just trying to, he's just trying to hold on <coughs> to power mm -hmm. you know and it just it's, it's just corrupting him yeah. and he's just spiraling deeper and deeper into sin absolutely until he does this horrific thing which mm -hmm. is make a decree to kill all the all the baby boys who are two right. years old and under. Can you imagine? And then we get this 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 Old Testament reading, you know, this um, you know, Rachel weeping for her children. Yeah. It's rough. I mean, yeah. It's rough scripture. Yeah. It's it's like I talked about today in my sermon. It's it's how do we hold two different kinds of narratives? How do we hold bad news with good news? Good news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? And I think we're tr we're trying to do that now. You know, I think I think we have to learn how to do that. I think we absolutely have, you know, especially when we think about this year. Yeah. And you know, yep. all of the events of this year, and you know, for some, there has been bad news after bad news, but right. still holding on to the good news. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and so I think that as as tough and as brutal as this um, extended part of Matthew two is, yeah. I think this does give us mm -hmm. an opportunity to have an epiphany about who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That Jesus enters in to that brutal world with us. Right. That Jesus enters into mm -hmm. the world that is captive to greed and sin and mm -hmm. power mm -hmm. and is willingly subjects himself to it. Right, right. That's where the idea of frankincense come back because yeah. it, it, like, it, yeah. he covers us all. Yeah. And you think, when you think about the smoke of, of the incense and how it like yeah. twirls up, like it's, I don't know, it's, I feel like it's poetic for me. Right. But it like, right. you know, it whirls up and, and then it, it goes and it co literally right. it covers literally. everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, one thing that's really interesting stuff is what you just what you just said about how Jesus is born into this kind of this corruption, right, yeah. and sinful world. I I saw while I was doing some research for this passage, um, the the nativity, the light, the, not the live nativity, but the nativity that's set up at the Metropolitan Museum of Art mm -hmm. in New York. Um, it, that Jesus is not in a in a stable. But there are these columns, if you're on the internet, you can probably look it up and see. But there's these columns that symbolize the Roman Empire. Wow. And Such it's powerful. Yeah, and that is so powerful. And to, to know that that is sitting at the Metropolitan Museum of Art is really wild, you know. Wow. That there's, that's a statement like, you know, he's going to raise up the lowly, right? And, yeah. the, you know. Um, the mighty will fall, yeah, and absolutely. I just love that image um, and the choice of whoever designed that to create those, you know, those columns of the Roman Empire, and they're kind of they're kind of like teetering and mm -hmm. you know broken, and and there's and there's a baby Jesus in the midst of all of that. So it's oh, powerful. that's fascinating. Yeah. I'm gonna check that absolutely. out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's cool. Cool. So in our last few minutes here, I want to play a second song for us. We opened up with the most famous Epiphany hymn. <laughs> this is a new song written by an artist named Liz Weiss, and it is called Refugee King. This is to the tune of the famous Christmas carol, Away in a Manger. So the tune is familiar, but it is new lyrics that reflect on this slaughter of the innocents, mm. this experience that Jesus and the Holy Family had fleeing from Herod mm. as refugees. Wow. So I will put the lyrics in the chat. I would invite you on Facebook to share as you're listening lines that catch your attention. Mm -hmm. And let's hear Refugee King by Liz Weiss. Mm.
Facebook and Allison and Delas, what strikes you about this song? How does this song help point us towards deeper insight about who Jesus is? Mm. I can say the first thing I noticed is they were singing um, and they're talking about um, all the worries, all the weariness. And mm -hmm. as they came to the refrain, it was just uh, the, the ooing was like mm -hmm. this a lowly place of place of praise. Mm -hmm. And then they get to the third stanza, the third verse, mm -hmm. and it's it's like a raised sense of praise. Mm -hmm. And they go from and they ran and they ran and they ran to and we sing and we yeah. sing and we sing hallelujah. Um, I, I just feel like the tempo of, of the praise that is lifted changes. Um, this is the, the that piece was really I don't know that I really felt mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love that both of these songs, this classic hymn and this contemporary praise song, mm -hmm. end the same way yeah. with, you know, orienting us towards singing mm -hmm. hallelujah, mm -hmm. even though they're, they're very different and talking about very different experiences. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts, Allison? Well, what struck me is the first two verses really are talking about, you know, this experience of Jesus and his parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having this experience of, you know, being a refugee and running away and running and hiding. Mm -hmm. And then the third verse really it makes it very personal because it says, stay near me. Mm -hmm. 
when danger is nigh. And there's, you know, to me, it's like Jesus experienced danger in his mm-hmm. life, you know? And because he experienced that danger, um, he's with us in our danger, when we experience danger. Right. And, and keep us from Herod's in all of their lives. Ooh. I mean, there's just something, there's just, you know, it's very powerful. Mm-hmm. And we do have Herod's today, don't we? We Absolutely. sure do. We sure we do. do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The refugee king. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The refugee king. I'm really struck reflecting on this song on Epiphany by what I think is an invitation here to think about the way that our epiphanies of Jesus, mm-hmm. our coming to deeper insights mm-hmm. of who Jesus king and God and sacrifice is, lead us then to greater care for our neighbor Mm -hmm. who Jesus lowered himself to be in solidarity with. Mm -hmm. And so this glorious vision of the truth of Jesus Christ and compassion for our neighbor Mm -hmm. who Jesus came amongst us as one of one leads to the other. We can't really authentically do one without the other. We can't have our hearts lifted to worship and adoration of who Jesus is without then caring for those who Jesus cares about. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Pat really loved the line, no stars in the sky, but the spirit of God. <laughs> wow. Any final thoughts from either of you as we close out today? It's a lot. It is, it is a lot. And if you want to keep reflecting on these themes of Epiphany, we invite you to tune in to Bible study tonight at 7. We will look at a different one of the lectionary texts tonight and have some prayers for Epiphany. And then on Wednesday night at 7, we are concluding our current Bible study series with a lesson for Epiphany. So we do have some more opportunities to keep pondering this time in the church year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you for sharing your thoughts on Facebook. We love to have you as part of the conversation. And next Sunday, we will be starting a new series. So we hope to uh, see you then either on streaming or on Sundial. Yeah. So let's pray together. Oh, Jesus, born as a baby, King and God and sacrifice. We thank you that you came among us as a refugee king. And we thank you for your word that helps us to encounter you in new ways. We ask that you would bless our final days of Christmas tide, lead us into a celebration of Epiphany, guide us always towards new and deepening insights into who you are, and may those insights into your nature lead us to better love and care for our neighbors. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much. We'll see you next week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.